Marker. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second try of the Ripple Effect podcast here for Christmas week. Um, we recorded this podcast already. We did. <laughs> and it was so good. It was so, so good. Too we good were, for anybody. We were a little slap happy. <laughs> a little bit. It was too good, really, to air. Um, apparently, the something all with the audio messed up. And so here we are, recording again. Take two. We're sorry it took a little bit for this to get out, but we are glad that you've joined us for today's Ripple Effect podcast, whether you're watching this online or you're listening to it on the go. We uh, hope that you are doing well as you're getting prepared for the Christmas uh, rush here at that very last moment. It is too late to order anything on Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you order something on Amazon, you're not getting it by the 25th. It's really? too late. I think, think so? I think so. What day is it? No, they could probably get something <laughs> Saturday. Maybe in a two-day? I bet they could. They're pretty fast. Yep. Well, our Christmas... Check your shipping date. We're doing our Christmas on Friday, so it's too late uh, for me. It's too late. It's oh, yeah. too late for me, but maybe for some of you. Um, but we, we hope you're doing well, and we hope that uh, you'll be encouraged today. And uh, also, we let you know a little behind the scenes of stuff that's going on here at Timberlake Christian Church. So before we do any of that, we have to give you the sponsor of the week. And the sponsor of the week was... <laughs> <laughs> did you see Brian's panic on his face? Like, we what? did have this the other we did. day. It was the last candy cane. It was the last <laughs> mini candy cane. And because you could, we gave out like a thousand at the parade. Uh, the Christmas parade, then we gave a bunch out at Mega Tree, and uh, we don't have any more. So, <laughs> we let Brian eat it. <laughs> there are some. There are some in the. Well, I shouldn't tell people that because they might come take them. But there's some in the little hut outside. Oh, but you, they are Dollar Tree mini candy canes, which are not the same. Oh. Well, you if know you they're had, not mint. Well, they are, but like compared to the. What is it, Brock's? Uh huh. They are. Oh, like, that's good. No. Well, that was our sponsor of the week, and um, <clears throat> that's, Sorry, that's we it. Ate it. Sorry, we ate it. We ate the sponsor. <laughs> we ate the sponsor. Of the week. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, let's, uh, let's recap this past week. On Sunday, uh, we had a great Sunday, and we were uh, visited by and we welcomed Fidel, who is our missionary partner in Mexico. And um, Brian, you got to preach. Mm -hmm. How did you think the week went? How did you think Sunday went? Was it good having time with Fidel? You got to see him on Monday. Yep. Tell us everything. Yep. So it's always kind of a reunion when he's here because a lot of people have gone down there over the years, mm -hmm. either with adult mission trips or even when they were students uh, back when it was safer we yeah. used to take students down there and anyway I thought it was awesome I my favorite part of uh, being with Fidel is playing music with him we got to do that a little out at Dawn's they had kind of an open house for people that have gone on the trips um, not all of them so if you didn't get invited don't be offended like you there's a ton of people so yeah. they just kind of took the people who went last year mm -hmm. and some of them who are going this coming year so mm -hmm. you know but it was a good time with them mm -hmm. and and Sunday I didn't know what he was going to do because you're always dealing with a little bit of a language barrier and mm -hmm. stuff but I loved the song he picked mm -hmm. about light yeah and perfect people who know a little Spanish caught maybe a little bit more. He said it was about the light of Christ or something, but mm -hmm. but when, when you're sitting there listening, I know some Spanish and like it's little phrases are popping out to me. Uh -huh. I'm like, wow, he really gave that some thought and picked a perfect song. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I, I was saying that the sermon, <clears throat> I felt foggy because we're in the busy season. And we talked about that. Should I even be preaching during this season? Mm -hmm. But we're all busy. I yeah. mean, yeah. I'm not the only one that's busy. We all are. So it just comes out the way it does. And there were still four or five people that were like, that was exactly what, what I needed to hear today. Yeah. So it made me go home feeling like uh, we say this often, but some, some weeks we live it out that God uses imperfection. I felt like it, it was a little bit of that. Uh, Sunday, like I had yeah. prepared and everything, but it just wasn't wasn't the ten, you know. <laughs> and, and and yet somebody still needed to hear it, and God still spoke through His Spirit through yeah. through that. Yeah, He's good like that. He is good like that, and we're grateful for um, some of our volunteers. Anthony uh, Brake led the music and did a great job getting that prepared and getting that ready. And uh, we're so grateful for him and for the people that volunteered. Mm -hmm. um, 
Do you even remember Sunday? What what happened for you? Justin was here. Jo- oh, that's right. Uh, Justin and Paige were here right. we're and helped back. in the kids' wing, mm-hmm. and all the kids love it when Justin's back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was fun. And uh, Sunday was also the first week when um, the kids could get their year Bibles. Mm, tell so us about that. I ha- I had we had talked about this a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. but I challenged the elementary kids in grades one to five that if they were up for a really hard challenge of getting in the habit of reading their Bible every day. I would give them uh, read the New Testament through in a year where it's broken up into chunks for each day. Mm. And it would be theirs, and I would put their name in it, and they could take it home. But only to make only to accept the challenge if they were going to give it a try. Yeah. And so um, they've had a couple of weeks to think about it. And so Sunday, several of them put their names on this piece of paper that says, I will do my very best to read God's Word, and um, got their Bibles. And I still have more, so, you know, if you weren't there or you would like to follow along with us, Mm -hmm. I think it's going to... It's a doable chunk. It's a great challenge, though. I've seen the Bibles, uh-huh. and it's a good section. I think probably like 10 to 15 minutes yeah. reading through it, depending on how fast you read. Uh, I know for me, it's a great. it'll be a great challenge because <clears throat> one of my girls wants to do it, and uh, she, was, she was a little worried yeah. when she got at home and started looking at it like, Every, That's a loud word. Every, every day. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I think I think we can do this together. Uh, it's a good challenge for adults, too. So if you're uh, maybe a parent or a grandparent that you want to try this with your, your child or your grandchild, uh, it's a great opportunity to get in the habit of reading God's Word every day. Manageable chunks, because like you said, it's just the New Testament. It's just the New Testament, yeah. So it is manageable. And and I did tell them, even if they're not great readers, mm-hmm. they could have a sibling or a, a parent or a grandparent. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I even thought parents are often busy, but sometimes there's a grandparent or, or a friend, mm-hmm. you know, that they could call every day and read it to them over the phone. It wouldn't be that hard. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, Okay. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Yeah, I was really happy to see Justin. It was really nice to have him back. My youngest daughter really, really likes him. And so I said, hey, did you see who was here today? And she's like, I know. And I said, "Are you? were you excited? She's like, I don't like him anymore. I don't like him. And then she kind of looks at me like, no, nah, it's not true. <laughs> so we're, we were really glad to have them back. Um, but we talked about uh, another marker of the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of heaven in Isaiah, and that was light and the light that God brings into the world. And uh, if you missed that or any of the songs that Fidel sang, you can go to tlcc.church and you can catch up there. Or you can go to the Facebook page and you can see both services that are there. Are they still both services or are we just doing one now? Usually both are there. I think both are on Facebook. That one glitch if and you, we delete it. Yeah, if you want to compare, sometimes it's fun to compare first service to second uh-huh. service. You can see all of that there. Um, now we want to move into the TLCC top three of the week to let you know what is coming up. And this week, there's really one main announcement that's split into three parts, and mm-hmm. that's all about Christmas. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Brian, tell us what's happening, what are the correct times, and... Last time I messed up the time, so I'm going to be very quiet at this point. You tell us what's happening and what the people should expect. All right. So Christmas Eve services are on the Christmas Adam, we like to call it, 23rd and 24th, 5 o'clock p.m., and that's a one-hour service. We really try to respect your time and and keep it to an hour because people go out and have dinner or whatever afterwards. And then the morning of Christmas Eve – because Christmas Eve is on Sunday, that morning we have our normal times. Mm-hmm. We will have, um, it's a fifth Sunday. No, no not yeah. the 24th. The 24th oh. is a... See, I'm yep. messing up today. This the 24th is, is a regular <laughs> Sunday, 9 to 45. Yeah, regular yep, Sunday. Yep. yep, and we have classes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the 24th in the morning. On the 31st is what I was trying to jump ahead to. We have our plaid and Pop-Tarts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We keep changing that, so it confuses me. It sticks around every year. I'm going to be gone for it, so sadly we'll have to miss that. But on the 31st, if you can wear your plaid, if you want. Mm-hmm. And in between the services, we said about 10 o'clock up till 1045, there will be Pop-Tarts. There will be toasters. Mm-hmm. And... So. Yeah, pick up. And that that Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month. Yep. Yes. So during ten forty five hour grades one to five will be with their with their adults mm-hmm. in the um, service. Yep. yep. So 
Christmas Adam service, or what we call sometimes Traveler Christmas service, is happening on the 23rd. It's at 5 p.m., and Brian's telling me that I have to keep my talking points down to a a little bit of a time here if we're going to respect your time. (laughs) And then you got Sunday morning, which is just a normal service. Uh, singing. Brian's going a little bit rogue on that morning. He's doing some Christmas carols. Is that happening? Yeah. That morning. That morning. This is this is uh, Easter morning or Easter. <laughs> Easter. <laughs> I'm out of here. Bye, guys. We need to take three. <laughs> we need to take three. <laughs> Christmas Eve morning. <laughs> we are. Maybe we still are slap happy. We are. Uh, having a normal service, but instead of having the band and the yeah. full, uh, you it's know. It's going to be, of course, the stage will be set up like the program with a bunch of chairs. Yeah. If you sing, you don't have to be a great singer. I don't really care. If you like singing Christmas songs, hop up on the stage Sunday morning. Brian's going to say, it's going to be an open invitation. This is very risky. With no rehearsal. No rehearsal. Brian's just going to, well, he doesn't need rehearsal. He's. Well, he, I have. I have to take Brian's take rehearsal. I have. Oh, I have to, oh, singers right. that are rehearsal. He doesn't really need to. But, the, 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 but he's going to throw people up there. So if you're a singer or if you just like participating in Christmas carols or if you've been working on a dance routine, <laughs> this is your moment. <laughs> this is it. That. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's this the is the moment. <laughs> So for for, for the uh, Sunday morning on Christmas Eve, it is going to be a normal service. We'll have songs. I'm going to preach a sermon. Mm-hmm. But for the music, instead of having to practice again, we've had a lot of, a lot of practices already for the uh, Christmas Eve yeah. services. Um, we're welcoming you to sing with us. So uh, let's get you real succinct here. We have our Travelers or the Christmas Adam service that's happening at 5 p.m. Uh, and then, and that's on the 23rd. You've got a normal Sunday morning uh, on the 24th, but that evening we'll have our Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m. as well. And then next week on the 31st, we'll have our fifth Sunday, which is Plaid and Pop-Tarts join us. And I do have one more special announcement about that service. Um, that service, I'm really excited. Levi Black is going to be preaching for us. I know. Mm-hmm. I've tried to get him to preach before. It just didn't work out. And he's going to get the chance to preach. And uh, it's going to be a great morning. And if you love Pop-Tarts, it's even going to be a better morning I for know. you. I wear those plaid pajama pants. Plaid pajama pants, <laughs> plaid shirts, eat your Pop-Tarts, and enjoy a great service. Um, well, let me just ask uh, you guys how slap happy you are right now because I don't really know if we have much more to say. Do we have anything <laughs> else to say? I did ask you about Monday night with Fidel, and you've already answered that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys have anything else you need to share? Mm-hmm. I think we're good. No. Well, just that it's been a crazy season, it and it's also been really good. Like I, I enjoy everything we've done, mm-hmm. but... We were, we were talking the other day that um, this season, no matter, of course, on the year we have the Bethlehem thing, it's extra yeah. for everybody. Um, but there were tons of people that stepped up. And for Christmas Eve, we have 20, I think so, total 27 people wow. participating that mm-hmm. have committed to these practices, which the practices are stressful because we cram a ton in. We... I uh, have another one tonight. Mm-hmm. At, um, if you're watching this for uh, five thirty tonight. tonight, is the <laughs> practice. Don't be late. Don't be late. Um, but uh, several of them are new or people that don't regularly participate with us, mm-hmm. and that's why it's really. Well, there's lots of reasons, but that's one of the reasons that's really fun to do Christmas Eve mm-hmm. with a big group of people. Even though it adds even more stress. Yeah. I tell people. It's one of my favorite things to put together every year. Yeah. Well, I love the line. Um, I don't remember what song it is. You'll know it right away when I say it. But a weary world rejoices. Oh, yeah. What's the song? Oh, holy night. Oh, holy night. Um, because we, we did talk about how, you know, Christmas season is always busy because just lots of events. They've gone very smoothly this year. Yeah. <laughs> they have gone smoothly. The mega tree. you you jinxed the mega tree, although it did it. It didn't break down, did it? No. When we recorded this the first time, he said, we haven't really had any issues Yeah. <laughs> with, with the mega tree. Drive through Bethlehem went really smoothly. Me, but there's no wood in there. <laughs> it's all metal. <laughs> yeah, it's <That's> right. steel. <laughs> it's all metal. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had the rain with drive through Bethlehem, but 
you know, overall that went pretty smoothly. We had yeah. great volunteers. Um, with the, we had some stuff with the, oh, we do need to say this about the uh, food trucks before we had the mega tree night food truck nights, um, what, last weekend. Mm-hmm. And, um, we had, there were some issues there that had nothing to do with anybody who was trying to plan it. Jenny Walters did a great job of planning the food trucks. We were saying how this year they were probably more prepared than ever. They were mm-hmm. planned ahead of time. They had a great variety, but issues that nobody could control people getting sick vehicles breaking down people just kind of being flaky um it, we just want to say jenny thank you so much for the work that you yeah. did because mm-hmm. you did an amazing job and we are so grateful for you and everybody should be but even with all of that i thought it still went pretty oh, well yeah. i mean and we still they i looked on the paper there were over 400 people mm-hmm. yeah. the first night and almost 400 the second night. Yeah. So it, it was still great. And and I think, um, you know, if there was any disappointment anyone had, it was just they had their favorite truck that didn't show up. I wanted yeah. those donuts. Something that they donut truck to show up. To. I was excited yeah. for that. But the point is, is even in the business of everything, that phrase, a weary world rejoices, it's been good, even though it's been busy. It just reminds me of... Um, even in the busyness of life, we, we have a reason to celebrate. Mm-hmm. We rejoice because um, God sent Jesus to this earth. And no matter whether they're calm seasons or busy seasons, or I, I'm, I think it's a myth that life is going to slow down. I think that's <laughs> a myth. And we say, when, you know, when things slow down, gonna, I think that's just a myth. But the weary world can rejoice because um, God sent Jesus to this earth. So I'm just reminded of that as you're talking about mm-hmm. the busyness of, of the season. And my need for a nap. Okay. Let me give you the blessing of the week and uh, we'll get you out of here. I I realized that we've been going through Isaiah and we've been talking about Christ as the king and the, the, the marks of the kingdom. We haven't really read a lot of the Christmas verses that you traditionally would read. And for good reason. We hear them a lot and in other places. Um, but I wanted to read one for you. It's in Luke chapter 2. And it says this. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And then the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. I just want to pause there and just highlight those couple of phrases there. Good news that God sent Jesus to the earth so that we might know who he is and what he has done. That is a cause for great joy for all of us, but it's not just a great joy for some, especially at this time, you know, there was this class systems and only certain people got certain information. And if, especially if you were a Jewish person, you thought this was only going to be for us. It's good news for all people. Any walk, any race, any background, any sort of failures, any sort of successes, this is good news for all people. And the news is this, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Uh, That God would send a Savior so that we might know forgiveness and that we might uh, know who he is. And so then the angels gather together in a multitude and they sing glory to God in the highest and on earth uh, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And so just be encouraged and reminded that this is good news for all people, that God would send Jesus as the Savior so that we might know the peace that comes from him. That's it for this week of the Ripple Effect podcast. We hope that you, uh, as you're finishing up, you're getting ready for Christmas, that you find moments to experience that joy uh, of the good news. And uh, we hope you join us for our Christmas Adam and Christmas Eve services. And uh, if not, we can't wait to see you back here uh, on the Ripple Effect podcast. Is that it? Yep. That's it. All right. See you guys. See you later. See ya.